Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we have an ink that is brought to you by Papier Plume. It comes in this box right here. It's a little cardboard box. It's got uh, papery padding inside, inside that box is this cool little bottle. I think they really nailed the, uh, the labeling on this one. It looks awesome. Uh, this is Red Beans and Rice from Papier Plume. They always have this cool uh, like dip and drip wax uh, thing on the top here. I really dig that. And uh, this one in particular, I think, just really turned out well. So good job on the design, Papier Plume. This ink is being introduced today, the 14th of J uh, oh man, July. Yikes. It is available today uh, at the Miami Pin Show and also online at papierplume.com, so check it out there. Uh, it's not going to be particularly limited, I don't think, so you should be able to get some, but I wouldn't dawdle uh, because I do really like this ink quite a lot. And there's a little sneak peek of the inside of the bottle. You've already seen the smear, so you know more or less what this is going to look like. Red beans and rice is a... Um, is an awesome dish. I'm told you generally have it on Mondays in New Orleans. I mean, I used to eat it growing up and all, uh, and all that sort of thing. Uh, we'd actually make like a goulash version sometimes. Uh, I remember there was a summer camp where they had some folks from Bolivia and they made us red beans and rice. It was amazing. Uh, but red beans and rice is great. It's just kidney beans, rice, spices, etc. And uh, man, they nailed the color on this one. So let's take a look at the color. There it is. That's how it looks once it has dried. Uh, and man, it looks exactly like you're writing with that juice that's in kidney beans, right? So if you, you know, open the can of kidney beans or if you cook up a bunch of kidney beans, man, they are this color. Sort of fades from this like, like I don't know, sort of uh, pale rosé into the deep kidney bean uh, red color there. Uh, it's a very cool color. It's kind of a maroonish, I suppose, is the way to talk about it. Yeah, pretty maroony, I guess. Uh, and as I say here, I'm actually using a different... Uh, uh, paper this time. I just wanted to try out something a little bit different, and uh, I haven't had this ink all that long, and I almost forgot to put it up today. So uh, today I'm using a uh, Mormon Septicolor. There it is, Septicolor. There's the Mormon thing. This is an A5 notebook. Uh, they have really good paper in these things. It's not quite as uh, ink resistant as, say, a Rhodia uh, would be, but you can see on the back. Uh, the only place where it even has a little bit of a hint of maybe bleed through is here in the, the swatch. And that's a lot of ink you're putting down on the paper all at once. So that's not shocking at all. It's pretty impressive that it held up that well. All right. So uh, anyway, flow, very medium. I've got it in two pens, as I say here. Uh, the first one, let's look at this one first because I've already uh, showed this one before. This is a Platinum 3776. This is, this is with the music nib. Uh, my buddy David Figboot and I uh, did a, uh, his last name's not Figboot, uh, did a, uh, a music nib comparison. This is one of those pens. So a very broad, uh, very wet sort of line. The other pen is this one, which is one that is new to me. It is a loner from Papier plume. Uh, it's called um, uh, Fagionato, I believe is how you say it. It's a French guy who makes pens, has these beautiful upswept clips. This is an amazing material. I I'm told it is a Conway Stewart uh, uh, acetate, so I'm pretty psyched about that. Uh, I wish I didn't have to send it back. And then inside, it's got this awesome orange. I mean, look at that. It's beautiful, right? Kind of looks like shark skin is actually what a bunch of people have told me, and I totally agree. Anyway, this one has a medium Bach nib, and it is fairly fine. Uh, so you can see a massive difference in the uh, the line weight there. It also gives you a difference um, in the, uh, uh, you know, the way the ink looks. Jack, you can't get on my desk. Sorry, buddy. Because you get much more ink in a smaller area here with the uh, the Faginato, uh than you do with the Platinum. The Platinum puts down more ink all by itself, but uh, you get more in one place. And so you don't have quite as much shading, but you do have a good amount of shading, I'd say. Uh, commentary and such. You can see, find more of this on inkdependence.com with lots of still pictures and that sort of thing. But man, it looks just like kidney bean juice. I can't get over how much it feels like I'm writing. Well, looks like I'm writing with kidney bean juice. It doesn't feel like kidney bean juice. That'd be weird. Stupid Mike. Blah. Anyway, um, there's plenty of shading. Even with this guy, I, I do wish it was a little bit more um, uh, free-flowing, a little wetter. Uh, it works really well in the uh, in the music nib. It's a little bit more reticent, I suppose, and well, not reticent, but controlled. I haven't had any like hard starts or skips or like weird drying out sessions or I don't know funk on the nib or anything like that that would um, you know tell me that it was drying out too much or that it was a very dry ink. Uh, this is just an ink that uh, it doesn't have a super heavy flow, and um, 
I, I, I'd prefer that it had a little bit more wetness to it, but it's fine. It's fine the way it is. I haven't had any problems, just my preferences for always for wetter inks. Uh, here it is compared to a bunch of other stuff, and I actually have a whole bunch of uh, uh, little coloring, uh, color ring cards to show with different colors, but here's a brief one. Uh, Red Beans and Rice, of course, is up at the top. Underneath that, Robert Oster Chocolate, which is kind of a, it's way browner, but it's got the same kind of reddish tone in there. Uh, Platinum Cassis Black is actually one that I was surprised is so close. This is one of those um, Platinum Classic inks that's the Iron Gall, and so it does darken up after you start writing with it, and it ends up getting pretty close. It's drier for sure than red beans and rice is so if you want a good dry ink you know these two are pretty good but this one the, the platinum is drier underneath that one Monteverde Canyon Rust uh, which is a very cool reddish brown coppery color and underneath that one is uh, Franklin Christoph's Sweet Maroon and uh the Sweet Maroon is one of my favorite inks in this color family uh it's definitely deeper than red beans and rice but you get more uh you know um uh, shading, I think, with red beans and rice, perhaps. But both are awesome. This one goes more toward the uh, the pinkish maroon. This one goes more, I don't know, mauve, maybe? Anyway, let's look at this on a couple of other papers right quick. Uh, firstly, let's look at the uh, sort of standard copy paper. This is bog standard copy paper from Staples. Regular old 20-pound stuff. No real problems here. You get a little bit of feathering. I see a little bit here in the T... Uh, there's a little bit elsewhere. There's not really any feathering or spread with the uh, the music nib, which is interesting. Sometimes with a finer nib and these um, less good papers, you'll see uh, more feathering and that sort of thing, just because I think it's like like the it's cutting the fibers a little bit, and so it spreads or, or feathers. On the back, uh, there's a little bit of show through. There's a couple of places like right here. Uh, right here a little bit that it actually has a little bit of bleed through but it's mostly ghosting no real problems on here and if you don't really have problems on 20 pound it's going to work great on anything else it didn't uh, bleed through the mormon or anything like that uh, going up the paper ladder these are uh, this is the currently inked journal from uh, uh, Matt Armstrong at the Pen Habit. He doesn't really make this version anymore I'm running out of pages actually I've only got a few left um, but uh, on this wheat straw paper, which is really good, I, I've got, I, got, I bought a box of reams of wheat straw paper because I like it so much. So, uh, here we go. This is uh, uh, from the uh, Faginato, which is a medium. I should probably just write that on there now. Actually, the nib isn't marked on here, so I had to ask uh, what the nib size was. So, no problems there. Looks good to me. Uh, here with the uh, the Platinum 3776, you get much darker color than you do, I think, with the uh, Faginato's Medium. Just because on this paper, it soaks in a little bit more, and more immediately. You get almost no shading, which is kind of interesting. All right. And at the top of the sort of uh, paper that's good for front pens uh, hierarchy, you have the Tomoe River. It's not my favorite paper because it tends to take a long time to dry and that sort of thing, but it does bring out every bit of shading, any possible sheen, anything like that that you can get uh, from an ink. And this looks really nice. I especially, again, like it out of the music nib because it's putting down more of this ink. And I think more of this ink is better. Put it in something big and broad. Um, if you like fine nibs and that sort of thing, it's still going to look good, but it's, it's going to lack some of the depth that you get when you just pour it on the page, basically. Uh, oh, and I have it in... Oh, I forgot I was also have it in this pen. I just put it in there the other day. Uh, this is my STU DuPont Ellipsis. I totally forgot it was even in there. Uh, that's a fine uh, the fine nib. and uh, fine. Is it a fine or a fine italic? Anyway, whatever. It's very small-ish. And uh, it's a fine, I think. And uh, it looks good. It's a very wet pen, I think, and so you get a lot more color. So even with a fine nib, it can look really good. All right, so that's that. Let's uh, do, oh, here are my coloring cards. I'm going to go through it pretty briefly, just show like a couple that are really close. So this is Red Beans and Rice. This is Monteverde's Napa Burgundy, which is much more of a wine color, I think, than the sort of red beans color, kidney beans color of the Papier Plume. Uh, the other one that was very close is uh, Platinum's Cassis Black. Uh, which is closer. It's not as dark. It's oddly lighter than the red beans and rice. So this is kind of a spectrum getting more wine colored. Uh, there's a couple others that are um, interesting to put next to it. Uh, there's Sweet Maroon, of course. And uh, here's, well, yeah, this is kind of, uh, these are kind of the same ink, these two, but Okuyama and uh, Sailor Gentle Grenade, uh, or Grenada, sorry. 
pomegranates. But these have a ton of sheen, and this one doesn't sheen. So that's going to be the difference. These best have the kind of like same base color, but it's really taken over by the sheen on the on the coloring card. But tons of like greeny gold sheen. So that uh, let's see. There's one other in here that I wanted to show. Oh. Yeah, so two others actually, and these are both again sailors, um, and they both have sheens. So they've got that difference going, but they don't have as much intense sheen as the other two. This is uh, sailor number uh, Kobe number six Bordeaux, uh, which I have a sample of, and uh, Bung Box Tears of a Clown, which I actually just got a sample of from my friend Tammy. Uh, these are actually both from Tammy, and this one's also from Denise, so thanks, y'all. Uh, but these are both kind of close in the base color, but then they add sheen over the top. Of course, it's worth noting that these uh, Bung Box and Kobe inks go for like 30 or 40 bucks a bottle, whereas Papier Plume is like 8 bucks. So, if you can sacrifice the sheen, or if you just don't like sheen, get this red beans and rice. I dig it. Okay, so let's do our water test right quick. Where's my syringe? Here it is. Okay. All right, it's gonna move it around a little bit. There we go. Now we've got good coverage. And really not a whole lot happening. A little bit of that maroon is sweeping away, but not a whole lot. It could be way worse. Let's go ahead and mop it up. See, I remember to bring my paper towel this time. No more trying to do it with coffee filters. That was a bad idea. Oh man, so much cat hair. I set this down in a place where I think uh, my friend Jack the cat <laughs> has been sleeping. All right, good. Uh, out of my way, cat hairs. Goodness. All right. So as you can see, the purple kind of went away. The reddish bit's gone, but you get this like really interesting gray that's left over as a base color for this. And that's not super surprising at all because I've seen the chromatography. Go ahead and take a look at that chromatography. This is a really pretty one. It was fun to videotape, actually. I really liked it. Here is the chromatography for this ink. Really cool, right? I mean, you can see down here where it started. That's the same gray that you have left over here after the waters hit it. And then this bit actually fled pretty quickly, but then you have bits of this gray. There's like a little bit of lavender, I think. Uh, and you get this like pinkish red layer at the top that totally washes away leaving just the sort of gray, purpley bit at the bottom. All right, so that's cool. That's the chromatography for Papier Plumes, Red Beans, and Rice. Um, as I said, this is now available online and at the Miami Pin Show. If you're at the Miami Pin Show, uh, have an awesome time. I wish I could go down there, but it's just uh, it's not a good time for me for teaching summer school and all that sort of jazz. So no dice. But um, definitely go and uh, check that out. Go online and find uh, Red Beans and Rice in the New Orleans collection at Papier Plume. Uh, tell them I said hi if you get to visit. And uh, that's it. You can find me at all the normal places, inkdependence.com uh, for the blog. I am at inkdependence on Instagram, and I am at Madison on the Twitters if you want to follow me on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter a whole lot, but hey, you never know. You might want to follow me there. So there's that. Um, also, uh, you can find uh, our beautiful little dog, Scraggles, as Scraggles the Dog on Instagram. All right, so that was a Scraggles plug. You're welcome, Scraggles. Uh, <laughs> that's it. I will see y'all later. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, uh, go ahead and check out one of these other videos that YouTube is suggesting for you. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, I don't know, hit the bell or whatever. And uh, if you're feeling really awesome, hit that uh, patron button and become a patron of inkdependence.com. Uh, lend us your support. Us. Me, your support. That would be awesome. Thanks very much. Peace out and bye.